Welcome to Athletes to Entrepreneurs, the Alumni Journey. I'm Rob Finkelstein, founder and CEO of Alumni Direct. We've created the premier platform worldwide for alumni to spark connectivity through affinity relationships, whether it be through college alumni, whether it be through business alumni associations or athletes, we're trying to create content to help them out. And, and we're excited about this show. Uh, we've created uh, the show to teach and inspire athletes that there is life after sports. And uh, today we're really excited. Uh, we have Pete Mistralis on with us. Uh, Pete and I actually are fellow alumni, which is pretty cool. We went to University of Delaware fighting Blue Hens for, uh, for those people who don't know that. And um, so uh, Pete was a professional baseball player. Uh, he played baseball in the Olympics on the Greek Olympic team, which I'm sure is exciting. We'll hear more about that in a little bit. And then now Pete is a, an entrepreneur owning his own company. And so Pete, thank you so much for coming on tonight. How you doing? Good, Rob. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're welcome. It's 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 great great uh, to have you. And so I, I always I always have fun with this and say, um, tell me about your um, you know playing sports growing up. You know just ha how it kind of shaped you and ultimately to getting to uh, the collegiate level and playing sports there. Um, well, that, that's an interesting story because I grew up and I I, um, I wasn't the most athletic kid uh, when I was younger. I was I was a heavy kid. I was shorter. I wasn't wasn't fast, wasn't, wasn't strong, wasn't big, um, but I worked hard. Uh, it was my dream to, to become a major league baseball player. Um, and I, that was my focus. And from an early age, I worked hard and put in the time. Um, and for a lot of years growing up, I, I, I struggled against the other kids because they, they were physically more mature than I was. Um, but I kept at it. I kept at it and I, you know, I believe that if I worked hard enough, I could achieve that dream. Um, and then I got into my high school years and um, I kind of grew out of the chubby stage, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, that all the time and effort that I had put in started to pay off and, and I started to get pretty good. And um, I really liked being good and, and um, that just increased my drive even more to achieve my dream of, of making it to the major leagues, uh, to be a major league baseball player. Um, so that ultimately got me um, a scholarship to the University of Delaware to play baseball there. That, that's great. And, you know, it's, it's, it's cool hearing that story because um, I've talked to a couple of people on the show now at some other shows and uh, some of them had the same story that they just, they were heavy as a kid and they just, they weren't, maybe they weren't as athletic as some of the other kids, but you know, through perseverance and through high school and some not even starting playing until like middle, middle of high school. And then ultimately, uh, you know, making it to the collegiate level and, and then beyond. So when, um, so now you, you're playing uh, collegiate baseball, at Delaware, what kinds of things um, do, does the school uh, or the coaches, do, do they kind of help um, not only guide and coach as a, as an athlete playing, but also are there things that they do to prepare you for the future after sports? Yes. Um, when I was, when I came to Delaware, um, the head coach was Bob Hanna and, uh, Bob Hanna is one of the greatest human beings uh, that I've ever met. Um, the way, the way that I got hooked up with Delaware was that I was playing on a summer, uh, travel, uh, travel team up in, uh, New York. It was called the Bayside Yankees. It was like a elite travel team. Um, for kids that were just 18 and under, really, is what it was. Um, so we played a tournament at Delaware, and I had a real good tournament, and the coaches expressed some interest in me. Um, but I was, I was a kid. I was in New York City for the first time, and uh, I was having a lot of fun. And uh, I was actually telling my wife this story the other day. Um, uh, I... Went back to the to the team in New York, and we were, you know, me and the guys. We went out one night. We went out real late, and we were partying. And it got so late that I just drove straight to the field, and we actually slept in the cars at the field. And the coach caught us, and we got we got in a ton of trouble. And uh, that that made its way back to um, the coaches at Delaware, and that was two days before I was supposed to drive down to Delaware to sign the, the you know, for a scholarship to play University of Delaware. Um, so 
I think that most coaches would have said, you know, this guy, you know, he might not be somebody that we want in the program. He's a partier or something like that. And um, Coach Hanna sat me down when I, cause when I drove down there to, to sign the papers, he sat me down and explained the situation and he still signed me. And um, he kind of took me under his wing and uh, he, Coach Hanna cared more about you becoming a person and a man and, and uh, than he did about baseball, even though he was a tremendous baseball coach, uh, one of the best coaches I've ever had. But developing you as a person and, and as a man was, was the most important thing to him. And I will never forget that because I think most coaches would have taken that situation and said, well, you know, we'll, we'll probably stay away from this kid. He's from Florida. You know, you know, all the guys on the team are from the Northeast. He might be, you know, he might be a wild card. It could be a, a cancer on the team. When in reality, it, it was just, you know, one of those things um, where I, I was a kid and I was out late one night, but, um, but he gave me that chance and, uh, you know, I'll never forget that. Oh, that, that that's great. Um, one of the things, you know, what we're trying to do is, is, um, you know, just, it, it's all about networking and connecting and, and alumni. Um, and was there interaction, I guess, I know you, you hear stories in different sports about, uh, alumni and all, but what kind of interaction did you have with alumni? Did they get involved, whether it be, other alumni athletes, former players, or just alumni in general uh, at, at the university? Um, the baseball alumni is fantastic. Uh, we would have the alumni event every year and we would get guys that had from, from all ages that had been there, um, you know, 20, 30, 40 years prior to us. And that was something where we would get to know them. And uh, it, was, it was the alumni, as far as baseball was, was tremendously involved with the current program. That, that's great. I mean, it's, it's always good to see people kind of reaching out and helping me. And you, it's kind of like, I guess, when you look at, I think athletes in general, there's a lot of that, uh, the camaraderie. And then also, you know, you look at fraternities and sororities and things like that. Um, one of the things has been a, a hot topic right now is that whole, I guess it's NIL where now that college athletes can get paid to promote themselves. Give me some of your thoughts of, um, you know, obviously back back in the day when we were at school that wasn't happening but now do you like that and, and do you have any um, thoughts on you know whether that's a, a good thing for the athletes or not a good thing I think it's a good thing for some of the athletes um, but I, I think that anytime you start bringing in big money um, and kids it's it's not a good mix uh, I think that if the kids are gonna the, the kids that are going to make it to the professional sports, they're going to make their money. Um, but bringing the, that money into the collegiate level, I think is a mistake. It's just my opinion. I, I don't really know the ins and outs of it. And, and, and that, that system is foreign to me because it, it was, it was never part of the game when, when I was uh, playing. So I, I really don't fully, you know, I, I can't fully grasp how that's going to play out, but um I think putting a, a lot of money um, in, it, in these kids' hands at, at the college age, I think is a mistake. And I, I think that there's, it opens the door for a lot of corruption and a lot of other things. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, uh, one of the other um, guests I had on the show said the same thing. He was, he was just concerned about um, all of a sudden these players making this money and just not knowing what to do with it. I mean, just think about, you know, paying taxes and other things that, um, don't come up. And I, and I think um, we're, we're trying to work a lot with um, finding different organizations to partner with, to, to give those resources, um, you know, for it to help out um, the college athletes. We have one guy we we're talking that wanted to go into, um, uh, into the, they're already in colleges working with them on some training, uh, training aids, but they wanted to talk about like social media and, and the proper ways to handle it. Cause I know, I mean, think about what you were talking about before the whole, that whole event that you have. Imagine yeah. back then social media wasn't big. I mean, how, how do you think, um, you know, what do you think today of social media and, and, and how to handle that as, as current athletes? Um, well, I mean, if the social media was around when I played, uh, we would have been in a lot of trouble. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think that it, it kind of keeps, it, to a certain extent, it probably keeps a lot of the kids in line because they really can't get away with, with much um, because everything, you know, everything's right there at, at your fingertips with the cell phone. Um, 
It like, it, it's a foreign thing to me because it wasn't around when I was in their shoes. Um, so I really, I don't know. Yeah. What, uh, it, it's, it's interesting. Why don't you um, kind of share a little bit of your Olympic experience? I'm sure that was exciting. Yeah. Um, so it was, uh, I was playing minor league baseball at the time. And um, at the beginning of spring training, they get the, everybody in the organization, they get us all together and um, they go over things like 401k and, and insurance and stuff like that. And um, they brought in a scout from the Baltimore Orioles um, because the Baltimore Orioles are owned by Peter Angelos, who's a, a Greek American. And he says, is there anybody here that has Greek ancestry? Um, Cause the Olympic games for 2004 are in Athens, Greece, and we're putting together a team. And as long as you have a grandparent that was born in Greece, um, you're eligible to, to play on this Olympic team. So I said, you know, yeah, <laughs> I got I had My grandfather was born in Greece and it was myself and one other player um, who had the, the necessary Greek ancestry. And that was just in the San Francisco Giants organization. Um, so next thing you know, two years later, I'm, I'm playing in the Olympic games uh, for Greece. And, and actually in 2004, the US had gotten knocked out by Mexico and kind of like just a fluke game. So the US didn't even qualify. So we were kind of like the pseudo US team because we were all we were all Americans playing minor league or we had a lot, we had a few major leaguers too. Um, and uh, so we, yeah, we were kind of like the pseudo U S team for the Olympics. So it was, it was, a, it was a nice highlight in my playing career. To oh, I, can, I can imagine it. And so you, yeah, um, you were saying before with the minor league, like how long did you um, uh, play baseball after college? Um, eight years. I spent eight years in the minor leagues pursuing my dream. Um, I was just a senior sign out of Delaware and didn't get drafted. So I probably, um, probably shouldn't even have been there. Um, but I lasted, I lasted eight years and I got very close to achieving that dream that I had since, a, since I was a little boy. Um, yeah. That's great. I, I always dreamed about being a professional athlete, but I just unfortunately didn't have the skill set. <laughs> so I, like we talked about before, I had to live vicariously through my son and, uh, and, and coach baseball. Um, what's your, um, like your alumni experience? I mean, one thing that we've been talking a lot about is um, not only, you know, you've got that alumni experience from the college itself, but also um, as an athlete, is there, do you see that? Or are there, there are people that along the way, whether it been in baseball, other sports that you've kind of, um, kind of network together just based on your backgrounds kind of the, you know whatever the sport because I mean you all went through all the practice the blood sweat and tears and all that yeah absolutely and I'm just starting to to more get into that now that uh that my comp company is more established um after after I was done playing you know getting the company going um and getting through those early years was extremely difficult um so now that the, the company is established and successful, um, I have time for more things like that. Like just this past week, I got to go see the, the Delaware baseball team play the, you know, the Owls. And it was myself and uh, another player that had played uh, a while back. Um, so, yeah, it brings us all together. The coaches that are coaching the team now were there when I was there. And uh, I got to go mingle with the players and things like that. So, you know, they get to see me uh 20 years after i played there and um yeah it's a really cool thing and and you know even in pro ball a lot of the guys that i played with um those connections uh have paid dividends over the years just you know that they know someone that that needs uh a flight for for somewhere and and having played with a lot of the top level athletes those connections um have really helped too because you know, a lot of those guys are big money guys now. Yeah, no, that that's that's great, and that's you know we encourage that. And that, it was interesting. I was talking to um, a sports agent uh, last week, and one of the things he said that a lot of players that do kind of fail to, he feels that the best time to network and connect is when they're still playing, and then like what ends up happening is after they're done playing, they're kind of forgotten. You know, depending who they are. I mean, do you see that? Um, just like maybe. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you know, on the positive side of definitely, you know, you know how to network and connect, but do you see a lot of these athletes that might struggle doing that? Uh, you mean athletes that, that reach the highest level? 
Yeah, whether it's you know playing you know professional like you did in the minor leagues or even the major leagues or just any any sport like um, having challenges connecting with others. I mean, they're always going to have people, especially the successful ones like you talk about that coming after them and trying to. But I mean, just in general, like that whole athletic group, do you see the a camaraderie there because you know you've all kind of experienced some of the same things. I mean, it, it's there. It's just a matter of who wants to take advantage of it or not. Um, it's just like it's like the people that you went to high school with. Uh, you know, you have that connection with your high school classmates, and a lot of them will take advantage of those connections later in life and uh, build off that. And others, you know, disappear in, in into the you know. You never hear from them again. So I think it, it it depends mostly on the person and and what they want to make of it. Right. Yeah. Because uh, you know one of the things we're trying to do is is create a um, couple areas that we're creating a, an athlete community center. So where we started with college community centers, like an athlete community center, where you know groups of athletes can get together regardless of what the sport and just uh, being that private community and, and you know whether it's you know, promoting businesses, whether it's, you know, advertising, you know, having jobs, they might own a business where they're hiring people might want to hire alumni or just even creating events. And then within the, the college community centers, trying to do the same kind of thing of just creating these groups and these athletes groups, but connecting the alumni and the athletes. A lot of people have that the fond memories of when they're at school and they remember some of these athletes. And so whether it's a current player or whether it's a, an alumni player, you know, I think there's that, that excitement level, you know, from their own school. Um, yeah, and I, I think in addition to just the excitement of, of having that in common, I think that, you know, if I can connect with someone else that played sports at UD or played baseball in a business environment, it, it, there, there's an element of trust there as well, where you have that in common and it, it, it can build a foundation um, for a business relationship. Whereas, you know, if you have nothing in common, it, it makes it that much harder. Yeah, no, I, I've found that I've gone to different networking events and you meet people, you might have some common goals, but you know, when you have that experience of being a, a fellow alumni, it's, it's like you said, it's kind of that step up almost. It, it, there's that, that trust that, that, you know, yeah. you, know, you don't know the person you start out, Hey, you went to the same school, maybe, you know, grew up in the same area. Um, yeah. If you were to give advice, uh, you know, to, to athletes, um, um, the ones again that you know now it's time and their career is over, whether it's over after college, maybe they got hurt or they just ended after college, or even they went to the professional level like you. What kind of advice would you give them in their journey from their ending of their sports career and then life afterwards, and ultimately, in this case, to entrepreneurship? Um, well, based on my experience, Rob, um, the advice that I would give them is that they they when it's finally time to hang them up and uh, say goodbye to the sport that you've been playing your whole life and that's all you really know, um, you have to make your peace with it. You have to make your peace with it to be able to take all the positive things um, that you experienced along the way and use those in the business world. I say it all the time that I, I could have never experienced or I could have never experienced the success that, that I have in business had it not been for the failures that I had in sports. Um, and I don't look back at my sports career as a failure, but ultimately I did not achieve that dream that I had as a little boy of making it to the big leagues. I, uh, I never gave up. Um, I just ran out of time really is what, is what happened. And, uh, Baseball taught me how to just keep going, to never give up. And um, that that element of perseverance transferred over to the business world. And um, the, for the early years in business, I, I struggled. I struggled like any small business owner usually does. And um, I just kept going. I just kept going because of the, the perseverance that, that I learned in sports. And um, you have to be able to to set aside, um, you know, whatever, you know, whatever negative feelings you might have, I, I, I could look back in my baseball career and be bitter and say, well, you know, this coach didn't like me or, or, or I got hurt or, or this and that. And you could tell those stories, but at the end of the day, nobody really, you know, nobody really cares about that. And right. uh, so I, I made my peace with it. I accepted that it was mine, um, that, you know, I did not achieve my dream, but it made me stronger for the next chapter in my life. And, you know, my dream no longer was to make it to the big leagues, um, because even if I did that, 
it would have probably been over by the time I was 35 or, okay. you know, if I was an elite, then maybe 40. Uh, but, you know, you still have the, the whole rest of your life ahead of you. And um, then what? So, yeah. so yeah, the, my experience in baseball made me a stronger human being um, and prepared me for all the struggles that I was about to experience in the business world. So I'm very thankful for, for everything that, that I experienced in sports, especially the failures. Yeah, no, that, that's great. And I'm not, like you said, you've, the perseverance and everything that, that you have to go through over the years and just so, yeah. you know, making peace and then realizing now, you know, using that skill set, the leadership that you probably have and everything else now to, to put it into that. So uh, now fast forward. So uh, you kind of gave that 30,000 foot view before, but um, tell us more about what you do. I mean, you, you, you uh, own a, a private um, jet leasing company. Uh, so kind of go into that a little bit and, and here's that uh, kind of that commercial, but um, you know, we, we want to hear more about that and how people can find you. Um, so I'm the owner of Airstream Jets Inc. We are a jet car provider and air charter services provider. Uh, we typically service uh, high net worth individuals, small to medium sized companies. Um, and we, we fulfill their private jet travel needs. So every, every day it's different. Every day, every flight is different. Um, and whatever our customers need us to do, whatever uh, requirement they have, we fill it. And uh, they come to us, we go out into the market and we source aircraft for their particular mission. And um, we're successful mainly because our, our customers trust us. And uh, if I could give some advice to any entrepreneurs out there, um, building a trust with your client base is going to be the most important thing. Yeah, I, I totally agree. That's that's great. Did, how did um how did COVID affect um what, were there more people that traveled uh, private jets because of COVID and, and not dealing with all the airports and everything else? Um, it was kind of all over the place, but when I look, go back and look at the numbers from 2019 versus 2020, we, we did the same amount of sales. Um, initially, everybody stopped traveling in the spring of 2020, um, but then you had people that um, may have been able to afford private jet travel prior to COVID, um, but took the airlines. Well, you know, now they were scared to, to fly on the airlines, so they uh, they flew private everywhere. So we uh, year over year we were about the same. Fast forward to 20, um, 21, we we doubled um, what we did in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty combined. So oh, that's great. I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that the air, that the airlines, um, you know, there were, there's been a lot of problems in commercial travel. And I, I don't know if you've flown on the airlines over the past few years, but it's <laughs> for, for me, it, it's kind of a, a very tense environment just overall. And it's, it's very uncomfortable. So I think a lot of people um, were concerned about getting sick, but a, a lot of people also just didn't like that environment. And uh, it kind of pushed them into the, the uh, private jet charter space. So our industry has, uh, has really done well um going forward who knows i mean the the price of oil has just recently skyrocketed that's going to affect us a lot so we'll you know we'll see oh well, it's it's uh yeah i mean hopefully that every all that gets gets to uh, be in a better place well um how do what how do people find you what's um like your your uh, url and uh, what's the best way to reach out to you um our website is airstreamjets.com and we're also at distancecar.com. Our jet card is our signature product. We offer uh, jet card services with pricing by the mile. We're the only company in the industry that offers mileage based pricing, whereas all of our competitors offer only hourly rates. Um, our, our product is simple, transparent, and flexible, whereas the, the competition is just the opposite. So. So everybody go out and, and you, you, you need to use uh, Pete, Pete's services. He's a great guy. Uh, Thank you, you're Rob. You're welcome. Uh, alumni Direct, you can find us at alumnidirect.com and find us on LinkedIn and Facebook. And, you know, we're, we're trying to make an impact. We're, we're trying to help people to network and connect and, I, and find different content where we create value for alumni. And I, I think in the sports world, this is something we're excited about. And just in general, you know, how do we help people 
uh, kind of get to the next level. So thank you again so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Rob. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Take care.